Hi, it's Dwyer. It is May 14th, 2024. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's try something different here. Right, let's pretend that we are the trainer. How can Tyson Fury win this fight against faster, more coordinated Alexander Usyk, who feasts on big guys? Let's talk about it, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, I personally believe that Tyson Fury is at a disadvantage in this fight. I think Usyk is better than advertised. I think one of the big gifts casinos have given us over the last few years was Usyk at a plus 140 and higher when this line first opened. Right now the casino is wide awake. The advantage on the Usyk side of the betting line has dissipated. So, let's do something new. Let's pretend that we are the trainer for Tyson Fury, right? We're Sugar Hill. You have a boxer who's uniquely talented. He can do a lot. You can ask him to do unconventional things. What are we going to ask him to do to come out in the first round for this fight? Now, let's have an eye for history. Let's remember the 1980s. Let's remember, my computer's excited, obviously. Let's remember one of the biggest fights, one of the most charismatic boxers I have ever seen. Now, for me, the 1980s, and we all remember it differently, that decade had an edge, right? That decade had six in the morning. Just Google that phrase for music. Right? That, that decade had boys in the hood. Google that phrase. I know young people are lost on stuff like this. But for me, that decade really is summed up by the line in a song, She's so fine, there's no telling where the money went. Right? Understand, the 80s for many, you know, it's Robert Palmer. It's Save a Prayer, Duran Duran. It's I Confess, right? Look up these songs. So understand, in the 80s, you have Ray Leonard. Folks, he hardly fights for years. He hadn't fought for years when he announced he wanted to take on Marvelous Marvin Hagler, right? Fight's a huge fight, and that fight delivered. But what I want people to do is to revisit the first two rounds of that fight. It was a jaw dropper. Hagler a southpaw. At least that's how he fought. Comes out right-handed the first two rounds against Ray Leonard. Right now, understand, Hagler was edgy. Hagler was telling you, this guy does not belong in the same ring with me. Ray hadn't fought. Hagler comes out right-handed the first two rounds and loses them and what was a close fight here we are 2024 you have a southpaw who is unbeaten undisputed at cruiser that's after winning the olympic goal he comes to the heavyweight division let's be clear here he's walked in the front door Right after fighting people like Derek Chisora, he takes on Anthony Joshua twice, beats Joshua twice. Right, understand the crowd for the second fight was so hungry for Joshua to do something that when Joshua starts to do something in something like the ninth round, many people in the stand stood up. Right, very next round. Usyk pours water on it. Beats Joshua both times. Name another big British heavyweight. How about Daniel Dubois? 
Usyk comes out, even hits the canvas, off an illegal punch, they tell us. What does he do? He stops Daniel Dubois. Right, so now he's trying to conquer England, isn't he? Now he's taking on Tyson Fury. In other words, this is not a guy operating on the periphery of the division. This is a guy who's already beaten a heavyweight champ. Right? Understand, too, when he fights Dubois, Dubois had a lesser title at heavyweight. Now, of course, he's going for the whole thing. Usyk wants to be undisputed. But, and there's a but, you're talking to Tyson Fury and you tell him, hey, player, Usyk's a slow starter. He's cautious the first two rounds. If you're active enough, you can steal the first two rounds while he tries to figure out the lay of the land. Right? Other slow starters, Bernard Hopkins, Floyd Mayweather. Right? These are the guys who come out and they're looking at you. They're trying to see what you're going to do. For our purposes, Tyson, a round's a round. You win the first round, it's like winning one of the championship rounds. It counts the same on the judges' scorecards. Not only that, you can build momentum. Judges fall into a pattern. You win the early rounds, judges will get into the habit of giving you the close rounds. You might even win over the crowd, right? A lot of people in the crowd are here for you. You give them a reason to cheer and they'll cheer that much louder as you build momentum. So if I'm Sugar Hill Stewart, and understand you don't have to agree with me, you tell us your thoughts in the comment section of this video. Let's have a discussion as boxing fans. If I'm Sugar Hill, I do the unthinkable. Understand, I do not believe that Tyson Fury has the coordination, has the hand speed to fight Usyk as a southpaw. Right? Usyk's a natural lefty. Right? Tyson Fury would be fighting with his off hand. Against a natural lefty, I don't think if both guys came in with their A games, Usyk has enough to be a lefty against, excuse me, Fury has enough to be a lefty against Usyk, except for the first two rounds. If I'm Sugar Hill, I tell my fighter Tyson Fury to come out left-handed for the first two rounds for a couple of reasons, right? The first is it would be a jaw dropper. The crowd, the announcers out the gate, they're already hyperventilating. This is an undisputed fight. You haven't had an undisputed heavyweight champ since Lennox Lewis, and let's be real here. After seeing that Canelo couldn't pull 600,000 pay-per-view buys against Jaime Munguia, you know now more than ever that there's the heavyweight champ and then there's everyone else. Right, this fight, I can just tell you now, on May 14th, is going to pull well more than a million pay-per-view buys internationally. This is an event. Why? Because it's the heavyweight division. I'm not saying that the heavyweight champ necessarily is the best in the sport. Right, Lord knows there's some great fighters pound for pound. But what I'm saying is this is an event. Tyson Fury, in my opinion needs to hide himself the first two rounds. You have an opponent who's trying to figure out the lay of the land. You take him to the wrong neighborhood. I want Tyson Fury to come out left-handed the first two rounds. Usyk's going to be cautious. That's when you can be unconventional. Throw Usyk off. Show him a look the first two rounds that you're not going to have the rest of the fight as you win the first two rounds. Right, so if I'm Tyson Fury, I come out, Usyk isn't an early KO puncher. You know that. He's not going to be boldly throwing 
straight lefts early. So why don't I come out and I'm pumping a right jab. I'm active enough to steal the rounds on the judges' scorecards. I'm setting up a straight left. Right, The fight that Maris Breed has had against Usyk, to me, is the best fight an opponent has had against Usyk. Breedus early has success throwing a left hook. If I'm Tyson Fury, and Fury can fight left-handed. If I'm Tyson Fury, I come out left-handed. I throw enough right jabs to win the round against a cautious Usyk. But I'm also privately trying to load up on a straight left. Surprise, Usyk. If you're able to land big shots the first two rounds, great. But your mission, if you're in the Fury corner, is to show Usyk a different look. In other words, Usyk's going to be cautious, trying to learn what you're going to do, and you're going to show him something you're not going to do for most of the fight while winning the rounds. If I'm Tyson Fury, I come out left-handed the first two rounds. But I don't make the mistake Marvin Hagler did. Hagler's not active enough those first two rounds, and Ray Leonard had great legs. Ray's outside, Ray's moving away. Right here, if I'm Fury, I have to make sure I'm close enough to Usyk and I'm active enough to win those first two rounds. So then we get to the third round. I switch to righty. Even if I have success as a lefty the first two rounds, I switch to righty. Why? Because I have to keep my opponent guessing. So I switch to righty and then I smother Usyk's right side. His right jab. I smother it. This is something, for some odd reason, Daniel Dubois did not think to do. Right? If I'm Fury, I show the new look, then I'm smothering his jab. I'm staying away from his straight left. I'm over on his jab hand, and I'm smothering it. And I'm coming forward on that side of him. Once I have him turning, I have to have the timing right. I'm throwing not rights to the body. Because that leaves me open for straight lefts. No, I'm throwing left hooks to the body. On Southpaw Usyk. So what I'm hoping at this point is to be up two rounds to none. The first two rounds, folks, are crucial. Right? If I'm on the Fury side of the ledger, I can't spend any rounds being cautious, trying to learn Usyk. I have to be pre-planned. Then in the third round, I'm on his right side, smothering his jab, throwing left hooks to his body. If he starts to lower his hands, more beer for me. Then I'm coming up top, throwing the kind of left hooks up top that Maris Breedis threw. Let me say this too. Usyk is masterful at stepping away from the pocket. I can't let him. Right, so as I'm throwing hooks, I have to double them. I have to triple them. I have to smother him. I'm not going to be able to clinch him a lot because Usyk's that rare fighter who knows how to avoid getting clinched most of the time. But I need to make sure that I'm on the side of his offhand and I'm generating volume. If things are breaking for me, I win the third round. If they're not, a fight has broken out. Hopefully I've gotten Usyk out of his construct. 
right? Usyk likes to fight at his own speed the first three rounds. I need to get him out of gear. The first half of the fight, if I'm Tyson Fury, are huge. I need to produce. I can't wait to see what fight develops. I need the first two rounds, then I need to change the dynamic in the third, where I'm throwing power shots and I'm trying to hurt him. Understand, if I'm going to take Usyk's legs away in the later rounds, I have to bank body shots early. Since I know Usyk hits harder than advertised, right? Look at how lucky Joshua was to survive the 12th round of their first fight. Look at how discouraged Daniel Dubois was when he decided to have his fight against Usyk end inside of the distance. Right? Look at how weathered Maris Breedis was at the end of his classic against Usyk. And understand, that fight was in Breedis' backyard. Understand, both men went into that fight unbeaten. Right? Breedis, a guy who's, you know, an energizer bunny, to me, has really looked that spent at the end of fights. So if I'm going to slow down Usyk, I need to bank the body shots early. I can't wait. The danger, of course, is that you're facing a guy who is close to 100% because it's going to be in the first half of the fight. Right now, after that initial outlay, You're now in the middle rounds. I'm going to get back to whatever works. So if the first two rounds went my way and I pivoted away from fighting Southpaw, maybe I get back to that in the middle rounds. If my left to the body is working, then I continue to do that from a right-handed stance. Right, I'm going to see what's going on, but the one constant is going to be me being vigilant on Usyk's straight left. Right? So, if I'm Fury, I target the first half of the fight. I have to win at least four of the first six rounds to have a chance. Right? If I'm unable to do that, then I have to start going for a knockout in the middle rounds. Right? If Usyk has won three of the first six, a part of the fight when he typically starts slow. Right? If this is a jump ball going into the seventh round, then I need to realize that, quite frankly, I'm not going to win on the judges scorecards. The Usyk pattern is one where he pulls away late. In other words, the Usyk you're seeing the first six rounds is about 80% of who he is. You don't get to see 100% until you're in the 10th, 11th, and 12th rounds. He paces himself. He has extremely good stamina. It is undervalued. So if I'm Fury, I need four of the first six. Then I start ad-libbing. Then I lean on my experience. Let me also say too, Hagler made another mistake. Right? I'm telling you there is a whole group of people, it's more than 40% of the public, who believes that if you count the body shots, the champion entering the ring, Marvin Hagler, beats Ray Leonard, right? Hagler was counting on the public being so into boxing that they would acknowledge the body work he was doing on Ray Leonard. Now that opened the door because while Hagler was obsessed with 
actual boxing logistics. Ray Leonard, who is moving for most of the fight, was interested on the optics. So, with 30 seconds left in each round, Ray Leonard, who had blinding hand speed, would let his hands go. The crowd would start screaming, right? Ray would do things. I know, this shouldn't sway people. It did. Ray would do things like Ray's walking back to his corner at the end of a round. He's not even engaging with Hagler. He's walking back to his corner and he would acknowledge the crowd. Right? Leonard, at the end of the day, was one of boxing's premier showmen. Understand, Ray acted as if he was winning the fight to the point where he jumps up on the ropes before you get the final decision, right? It was clear that Ray wanted the optics to be such that if they announced that Hagler had won, Ray, of course, would have said, hey, I was robbed. I thought I won. You saw me on the ropes before the final judge's scorecard was even announced. If I am Tyson Fury, this is going to be a hard line here. I need to realize that I am am not loved like Ray Leonard was loved like Manny Pacquiao was loved right I'm not that guy so I have to make sure even if I'm landing body shots that in the last 30 seconds of rounds I'm not out hustled that I'm letting the crowd know even if in the ring I've been stung by punches, I'm letting the crowd know that I think I'm winning the fight. Canelo has a move where sometimes in the middle of a round, Canelo will raise his hand, right, to let you know, hey man, I'm doing okay, I'm feeling fine. If I'm Tyson Fury, I need to realize that even though the heavyweight title is the throne in boxing, I need to understand that I'm not as loved as Canelo is with his fans. Right? That the dynamic here, people are watching me because I'm proficient, because I'm the best. They're not watching me the way fans watch Ryan Garcia. Or the way fans watch Anthony Joshua, right? Understand, that's a love affair, right? Joshua fans show up to the fight and they're thinking, man, I hope my guy wins. I'm rolling with AJ. AJ can lose. And fans will say, man, if he just changes these things... Right? We can be on top. We, not he. Think about the Ryan Garcia fight. People literally thought he was going crazy. Then he blows weight, not by one pound, not by two pounds, by three plus pounds. Right? Understand, the folks still showed up. Now, I know he's dissipated a lot of the love with the Osterin. I'm expecting that B sample to come back positive. But just understand, people followed Ryan on social media. This is a guy who lost to Gravante Davis. This is a guy fighting the champ. He's not the champ. Right? He's fighting a champ who's unbeaten, who beats Loma, then shows up in a new weight class and beats Regis Progre. And you and I know the fans weren't with Haney. They were with Ryan Garcia. Tyson Fury needs to figure out that he's viewed as more Devin Haney than he is viewed as a Ryan Garcia. Life's unfair. I'm not saying any of this makes sense. But let's acknowledge reality here. So he needs to realize that like Marvin Hagler, who's very similar to him, right? People followed Hagler. You knew Hagler was the middleweight champ. 
but you weren't in love with them. Right? Just to understand that. So here, I'm not saying people are in love with Usyk. But Usyk's going to enter the ring. He's going to have the Ukrainian flag. People understand that this is a guy doing it the hard way. Right? That he's fought real opponents. Think about the guys he fought at Cruiser. They include Gassiev. Right? They include an unbeaten Maris Breedis. Right? By the way, Gassiev, unbeaten when he fought him. They include Glowaki. Right? Understand. Fans know a guy who fights on the road. Look at where Usyk's fighting people. Right? Gassiev in Russia. Breedis in Lafia. AJ in the UK. Right? You understand... This guy is here the hard way. There's a respect reservoir for Usyk. Also, many people view this fight as smaller man against bigger man. Many people. So Tyson Fury can't get out hustled at the end of rounds. He needs to involve the crowd. Even if he's successful going to Usyk's body, he needs to throw some shots up top or he needs to frame the body shots where he hits Usyk hard in the body, then he nods. He needs to assume that he needs to bring the fans into the ring with him. Right? If he wins four of the first six rounds, if he dazzles us with some gimmicks coming in southpaw, against the southpaw while the southpaw is trying to figure out the lay of the land changing his strategy so that Usyk is guessing right being prepared so he doesn't get steamrolled in the later rounds understand what happened that second AJ fight right and the one one judge had that fight very close right I believe one judge gives that fight to AJ don't ask me how but one judge does well, understand, after AJ has his big round and AJ fans make themselves heard, Usyk comes out and he shows some heart. AJ gets demoralized. Tyson Fury can't allow that to happen. Right? Fury's had some mental health challenges in the past. Right? He can't allow that to happen. He needs to have a reserve in those later rounds. Right? He needs to set it up so the last couple of rounds, he makes it a shootout. Right? Even if he's winning the fight, he needs to realize, hey, I'm not a fan favorite who can count on fans giving me the rounds I've won off body shots. So the 11th and 12th rounds need to be blood and guts. He needs to be prepared to open up. Let me say this too. He needs to test the referee. He has the reach advantage. Right now, you saw him in the rematch against Deontay Wilder. The fight he dominated. And you saw him illegally measuring Wilder. Right? He sticks his left hand out to make sure he's too far away from a guy with the best punch in the heavyweight division. Right? That straight right on Wilder. The ref stands around and lets him do it. Now here, I believe if he needs to take a breather, Tyson Fury can use reach and he can disguise it where he looks like he's throwing a lazy jab. He needs to be on Usyk's right side, away from Usyk's straight left. Right? And he needs to, at least at the beginning of rounds, Usyk's excellent getting inside, by the way. But in the beginning of rounds, when you come out from your corner, he needs to maintain distance and use that portion of the round to rest. Right? So he needs to just throw a lazy jab if the ref is in Attentive, he needs to just stick his hand out there and make sure he's too far away for Usyk to do anything. That's how he can use his height in this fight. I think it's a mistake to think that as a bigger man, 
he's going to be able to just get deep in the pocket like he did against Steve Cunningham and start throwing elbows and manhandling him. Those are my thoughts. That's what I would tell him if I was in the corner. Obviously, I'm not a boxing trainer. I'm a YouTuber. right? But I would tell him, look, player, we don't have time to waste. You can't start slow like this guy. You need to come out. You need the first two rounds. That's foundational. At the end of six, you need four rounds. If you have five rounds at the end of six, then let the game come to you. He's going to have to come inside. We can then just fight whatever A game you think is appropriate at that time. But bare minimum, we need four of the first six rounds. This can't be like an AJ fight where the crowd is restless for action and you're already in round nine, right? This needs to be active where we have four of the first six and then using your experience, you figure out what works while buying time at the beginning of rounds by sticking a lazy jab out there that's really a pathfinder to figure out that you're too far away from Usyk for him to reach you. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this video. Understand, you're the trainer. Thanks for stopping by.